Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ikra Bangla. Welcome to our second episode of Stories of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Alhamdulillah, we're, we are in the middle of Ramadan now and it's very exciting that we've completed already several weeks. Um, so let's see how you guys are feeling and we can share and discuss what we feel and what we do in this special month of Ramadan. Thank you for joining me again. I'm Jamila Gafoor. Today in the studio we have some really special guests. Um, so let's introduce you to them and see how they feel um, about the month of Ramadan and how it's going for them. So let's get started. Assalamu alaikum children. Wa alaikum salam. Now do you want to introduce yourself? Um, my name is Aswa. Aswa, and what's your name? My name is Adam. Adam, and what's your name? Shireen. Shireen, and what's your name? Uh, Riyathat. Riyathat. Thank you so much for joining me today for Stories of Ramadan. Uh, we want to discuss today about how your journey is in the month of Ramadan, how you feel, what you've been eating. That's my favourite part of Ramadan is eating. <laughs> and also what we've learnt in the month of Ramadan. So would anybody like to share how they're feeling? Uh, yes, darling. I feel really hungry and my, my, my tummy's rumbling right now because oh. uh, uh, it's really hungry. You feel really hungry and your tummy's rumbling. And remember um, what we discussed about sabr and patience. Uh, are you trying to use that at the time when you feel yeah. hungry? Very good. Yes, darling. How do you feel in the month of Ramadan? Sometimes I eat chicken or beef. Oh no, <laughs> when you're hungry you eat chicken or beef? Okay, well that's okay because you're still small. If you want to take a little break, it's okay. Allah won't be upset with you. But then do you carry on fasting after? And then you're practicing? Good girl, that's really good. And how about yourself? Um, Alhamdulillah. Um. Alhamdulillah. How do you feel um, fasting throughout the day? How does that make you feel? It's a bit of a complex feeling. I can't explain it in one sentence. It's more like a spiritual feeling that only you can understand. So it's You it'll, yourself can understand. Yeah, it'll be a bit hard to explain it to another person unless if they don't experience it. But you, you, you as a person fasting, so you feel spiritual. And when you say spiritual, do you feel like you're, you feel closer to Allah? You feel closer to your religion yeah. and you feel happy within yourself when you're fasting. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. And how old are you? Uh, 13. You're 13. And how old are you, Shireen? Four. Four. <coughs> and how old are you, darling? Ten. Ten. And how old are you, Adam? Eleven. Eleven. Very good. So we've got a mixed range, um, age range here. So you're all going to have different feelings. Uh, with the youngest, four. And then we've got the oldest, 13. So... Everybody's going to be at a different stage. In Ramadan, it's not a competition um, in, in the sense where, uh, you know, I'm fasting and you're not, or I, I think I'm better than you. So in the month of Ramadan, it's about peace. And like you mentioned, spirituality, feeling it inside you. So when you're fasting, oh dear, are you yawning? Are you tired? Maybe you should have a nap after your suhoor. Um, so when we're fasting, we have to feel calm and relaxed and feel um, good inside us. That's the whole reason of the fasting, is it makes you feel good inside once you've completed your fast. So what activities have you been doing in the month of Ramadan? Adam? Uh, I've been just fasting and uh, doing my uh, Quran and Hifs. Quran and Hifs. That's really good. So can I ask you, Adam, have you been taking extra classes or because it's the month of Ramadan, have you perhaps um, gone back a bit and uh, done less classes? Uh, I go to Nzil uh, during the weekends. Yeah, can you say a bit louder, I darling? To, I go to Nzil during the weekends. So do you think um, your studying has increased or has it gone down? Has it decreased? I think it's gone down because 
uh, sometimes I feel a bit tired. Okay, so maybe the hours have decreased, but are you reading more and are you learning a lot more? That's really good. Can you tell me uh, something that you've learned uh, about Ramadan whilst you've been fasting? Sorry, I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> Put your hand down, sweetheart. I've learned that uh, that uh, if you do if you do uh, twenty rakats of prayer, you, you get is uh, uh, you get uh, you get is you get the reward of uh, doing the whole night in prayer. Fantastic. So as Adam has just said, he's learned if you pray twenty rakats um, of salah of of tarawih, of, of tarawih um, you get multiplied and multiply amounts of reward and that's really good Adam and on that note I will say Tarawih is um, a prayer that we pray does anybody know what Tarawih is yes what's Tarawih um, Tarawih is a prayer after Isha very good Tarawih is, is a prayer after Isha yes yeah, which is consisted of two rakats and um, 20 of those two rakats after Fajr I'm sorry after Isha very good so Tarawih is a special prayer a special uh, salah that we pray only in the month of Ramadan and it consists of two rakats like my guest um, just said very good so you have been studying um, and it's really beneficial to pray this uh, salah uh, with our family especially for the boys and the men they go to the masjid to pray women can go to the masjid as well alhamdulillah um, and you can also pray at home but it's more rewarding to pray in a congregation together with everyone, uh, it's more humbling, which means you feel more good. It's more rewarding uh, to pray the tarawih with our friends and family. Yes, yes, Shireen, what would you like to say, darling? Do you pray tarawih with your dad? Yeah, and have you been to the mosque, sometimes, to the masjid? Sometimes I go to the mosque with my parents, with, with my dad, with my babies, sometimes. Oh, wow. So sometimes Shireen's go to the mosque with her parents and her family and her babies. Your, is, is that your baby brother and sister? Very good. Yes, darling, and, and what do you do in Tarawih? It's true that you know, if you pray with someone else instead of alone, uh, you get more reward. That is absolutely true. That is a fact. In Islam, in our religion, we learn that if you pray alone, you do get reward, but to pray next to somebody else in a congregation is more rewarded to pray next to somebody. What, what? Even one person? Even if it's one person, especially if you go to the masjid and you pray with your dad, or you could be your brother, your uncle, or your friends, your neighbours. Everybody lined up together in the mosque is more rewarding and highly rewarded by Allah than praying alone. So what do you eat in the month of Ramadan, Shireen? I eat these. Sometimes mm. I eat these. Some Delicious, delicious, something is sticky. Something sticky? What, you mean like a sweet? <laughs> no. Okay, what some do you... Like, some like cakes, some like chocolate, that's it. Cakes and chocolate, and what about fruits? I eat broccoli, carrots, and apples, strawberries. Very good. Chicken. Every day after your birthday, when you say it sometimes, you have to grow taller. Very sometimes good. So if you eat healthy food, you grow taller, like Shireen mentioned, and all the fruits. Very good. And, and what about you? Do you eat any veg Have you eaten any vegetables for iftar recently? I, I wish I could, but my favourite one is pomegranate. Pomegranate. Oh, that's one of my favourites too. Do you like opening? Is it your favourite? Is it your, do you like pomegranate, boys? Alhamdulillah, it's all right. Alhamdulillah, pomegranate is really nice. But the, the only part I don't like is opening it. Okay, so that's what we um, have learned about healthy eating. And what else did you eat then, Adam? What did you eat uh, for your iftar? I, I just ate... Uh, I ate uh, or what do you eat, drink. should I say, sorry? I, mean, I eat samosas and I also drink watermelon juices. Watermelon and juice. Uh, I'm just going to interrupt you. Watermelon juice is actually really good. Because subhanAllah, naturally, Allah has put water in the watermelon and it just, it, I feel like it quenches your thirst. And what I mean by quenches your thirst is it, it stops you from feeling thirsty. And I, I know you like to drink a lot of water, don't you, Shireen? Do you get thirsty a lot? No? Sometimes, 
Sometimes I do beat the same thing from oranges. It needs best to be. So orange juice helps you, does it? That's really good. Yes, Adam. So um, carry my, on, Adam. My, my mom also got me a lot of prime hydration mangoes, yeah. the mango drinks, so yeah. I can, so I feel really quenched after it's dark. So you stay hydrated, yeah. and that's really important, children, to stay hydrated. Um, as a Adam I mentioned, it means you have to drink less of things in drinks of. Which is Thank you very key. much, Shireen. Very good. So, as Shireen said, hydration means you have to drink lots of things and drink lots of water, which is really good. Thank you. Um, so, hydrating ourselves is really important because um, we've been fasting all day. So, when you break the fast, just imagine your body has not had any water all day. Everything inside us has just really slowed down. And so, when you do um, do iftar and you break your fast, how important is it that we drink water really slowly? How important is it? I need to drink water just slowly. Do you drink water slowly? Yes. Very good. And yes, darling. I think it's important to drink water slowly because if you drink it quickly, hiccups might come. And also, it's a sunnah to drink, to eat and drink slowly. Fantastic. So it's a sunnah to drink and eat slowly. And it's very important to drink water slowly because our body has been closed all day. So all our organs, our body's like a machine. It hasn't been working all day um, due to no food and water. So when we do put water into our mouth, we have to take little sips and slowly at a time. So it goes down our system and we don't fall ill or feel unwell. Yes, Adam, one minute, Shreen. I, I also heard that from my mum and uncle that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used Salam to drink Salam. Uh, water three times, three times with a sip each, and saying Bismillah in the first one. Then after eating the date. Fantastic. So when you drink water, you take slow sips three times, and you say Bismillah when you drink the water, which is a Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace okay. be upon him. That's a really good point that you made, Adam. Because I think um, when we're fasting, and we're, you know, we do look forward to the food as well as doing ibadah, which is prayer and worship looking forward to the food is something really exciting which we're allowed to do because that's our reward um, for fasting is enjoying our meal and sometimes i think we forget even um, younger children older children even as adults we're so hungry and thirsty we just kind of like just drink it really fast without realizing um, that how fast we're drinking to drink faster you'll be behind cups and you can talk every day yeah so if you drink it your your water or your juice yes. fast you'll get hiccups and you won't be able to what did you say talk talk because you you've been drinking it too fast yes. very good Shireen. but you drink so fast this is me that mean because sometimes this is a mistake about you can't talk sometimes well, sometimes you drink what so sometimes you eat some foods, mm -hmm. you will be those things you hide rages okay. make them times. Okay, very good. So what Shireen's trying to say is when you eat food, it's important that you drink and stay hydrated. Is that what you said? Thank you. That's really good. Well done. Thank you very much. So it's really important that we eat slowly and drink water slowly once we um, break our fast and do iftar. Um, just so it helps our body to relax and taking the food slowly and so we don't feel heavy and sleepy. So I'm just going to read the book now uh, and give you some information about Ramadan. Whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith, which is belief, and hoping to attain Allah's reward, then all his past sins will be forgiven. Now, what does that mean to you when um, it says whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan um, out of sincere faith. Uh, yes, darling. I think it means like you fast with all, like with all faith in Allah. So basically, you're doing it for Allah. You're doing it for Allah. Very good. You you were going to say something. You're doing it out of your own will. You're doing it out of, of your own out will. Out of your personal choice. Out of your personal choice, and that's really important as well, because as young children. Um, you have to be doing it out of your own choice as well as because you're practicing uh, when you're old enough to 
really fast the whole 30 days of Ramadan, it's important that you've made that choice because that reward that you're going to get for fasting is with Allah. So that's really good. Yeah. Yes, Adam. So um, it's also out of sincere faith, so you can't just go. And what is sincere faith? Uh, what can you explain to us, Adam? What you mean yeah, by sincere so, uh, faith? So an example of sincere faith is like you can't just go go, go about doing a lot of bad deeds and it, and then suddenly just fast with sincerity and then get all the uh, bad deeds forgiven. Like it has to be sincere, not like thought out and planned. So what Adam is is saying is. Uh, sincere faith in his opinion is when you are fasting um, you try and fast and not do bad deeds um, if you do do bad deeds then you're not being very sincere uh, and what was the other thing you said uh, you can't just go about doing bad deeds and mm -hmm. then yeah okay so that's what adam so, is oh, saying yeah, you can't like you can't try you can't try cheat and beat the system with allah so uh, what Adam is saying is you can't try and fast and then do bad deeds. So in other, in other words, what you're trying to say is the sincerity for you means that you won't do bad things because it's the special month of Ramadan and you want to be good. That's a really good opinion. I, I believe in that too. And I think it's really important when you're sincere. Sincere means like when you really want to do something. So like when you're at school and your teacher gives you work to do, Shireen. And when your teacher tells you, Shireen, complete your work and then I'm going to give you a sticker. Do you do it properly? Yeah. Do you do your work? Yes. Do you do good listening? <coughs> sometimes I do listen to listen to my teacher. Or sometimes you read lots of candies. Back to people uh, and you have to baseball more uh, have to. So you're a candy patient. You have candy, normal candy. You eat normal candies. You'll be have to aim and you have to go to the dentist. Okay. And then, so and you, so it's important not to eat too much candy in Ramadan. And, and then yeah. you and then after you you do the, the dentist appointment, mm -hmm. no more candies a week. Only half tea. Because I have to make you glowy and not the toothache sometimes. Toothache, very good. So Shireen is saying not to eat too much candy in the month of Ramadan, otherwise you'll have toothache and it's not good for you. That's a very good point you made, Shireen. Thank you so much. Yes, darling. You have to control yourself, just like she was saying. Like you have to control so. yourself. Very good. So self-control, self-awareness, and that also comes down to patience, doesn't it? And when you say um, self-control, in what way do you mean? It's to put discipline. Discipline, okay. And is that what you are doing in your personal life? Um, to help you fast in the month of Ramadan. And that's really good, that's fantastic. And you're only 13? Yeah. That's fantastic. Dumb. So, the, so um, my lovely guest here, oh, sorry darling, what was your name? Aswaf. Aswaf has expressed that when he fasts, he believes that self-control is really important. Limiting himself um, in doing things is really important. So he's sacrificing things that maybe he might have done when it wasn't the month of Ramadan that he's not doing in this special month. So he's controlling himself and that's really important. It could be some of us could get angry quickly. Some of us might uh, like going out and playing with our friends. So if we control ourselves in the month of Ramadan. And sometimes yeah? you will be hot when there's bedtime. Oh, at bedtime. And, and when you sleep, you, you have can't be scared, you have to be brave and then be scared. When this morning time you go to school with with your lunchbox, but you don't go lunchbox, you eat with your cereal. Very and good, then, thank you so much, and darling. Then, and, then, and you'll get the water bottle, and yeah. sometimes you go to school every day and, and you just okay. take a shower. And very good, that's center. a very good point you made. So it's very important, also in the month of Ramadan, that we always stay clean. Of course, we pray five times a day. We pray our tarawih. And sometimes. And we, it's very important, like Shireen mentioned, that we shower and every day and we stay clean. And because that's also part of purity and it's also part of ibadah, especially in the month of Ramadan. And my lovely guest. Yes, darling, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, I read in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in an Islamic book, Safa, yeah. book four or five, Yes. It is that uh, uh, staying clean is half of faith. Staying clean is half of our faith. 
Thank you very much, Adam. That is true. Staying clean is half of our faith. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always liked to stay clean. He always liked to smell nice. Uh, I hope you have a really nice Ramadan, inshallah. Please keep us in your du'as. Inshallah, see you again soon. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy your iftar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alpo boli shono 